Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If it is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin and I'm so glad you clicked on this video. Earlier this year, I did a MAC lipstick collection and declutter video where I went through my lipsticks individually with you, showed you them on the mouth and decided whether I was going to keep them or get rid of them. I thought today we would do a video that follows that same setup, but this time with my NARS lipsticks. All of the NARS lipsticks that I own are from the Audacious line. The thing about that formula is that it is super pigmented, the colours are beautiful and they pull on my heartstrings every single time but the formula itself is quite thick. It has a tendency to move around. I have got quite a small mouth so that's not great to start with because if it moves over the edge of my mouth and whatever it just, I know some people are really into the overlining thing and I don't mind a little bit of it but there's a point at which I just think it looks ridiculous. These lipsticks have a tendency to force me to end up overlining because when I go to clean them up, they end up, they slip about. They're very hard to control. I also think I must have quite an expressive mouth because this lipstick that I'm wearing is Olivia, which we're going to get to, and it's a colour that I absolutely adore, but I have put it on to film this video. I've done the finger trick and I've still had to wipe it off my teeth three times before even beginning to film this because it just moves around on me. If you blow it off to build it back up, you can do that, but A, it takes absolutely ages and I'm just not here for spending that much time just on my lipstick when I've got other lipsticks that can deliver colour in a way that it's not as thick a formula and it stays in place. But also, every time you blow it, you lose a bit of that pigment. You're never really doing it that way. Yes, it can make it less prone to moving, on my mouth but it also gets rid of that pigment which is what has attracted me to the colour in the first place. Now listening to that you may now be asking why am I not just decluttering them all in one fell swoop. That might be what comes out of today's video but I don't think it will be. Although I don't love the formula they are kind of on a scale. So there's ones at one end of the scale that are very wet that move around that I just don't feel safe to put on and there are others within the same formula which are nowhere near as wet. I think I need to weed out the ones that are at this end of the scale so that I know when I'm looking at them that the one I'm looking at is a safe one because I feel like I avoid wearing these lipsticks in general because I can't get it in my head until I put one on whether it's a safe one or not. So that's where we're coming from today. So let's get into examining each of them, looking at them and deciding which ones I'm going to keep. Now I'm going to start with one that I thought I would be keeping because I love the colour of it so much. It is this shade, it is Mona. I actually talked about this in my eyeshadow declutter video I think because I was talking about the makeup look that Emma Stone wore to the Oscars I think it was for the La La Land nominations. Her makeup artist put on Instagram what she had used and she used this lipstick in Mona along with a bunch of other stuff, most of which I bought. I absolutely love that look and I love this lipstick. It's a beautiful sort of brick, browny red, more brown than red I would say. So, so pretty. I will insert the cutaway so you can see what it looks like. I feel like it really works with my colouring. I feel like it really suits me. But... Although for the majority of these lipsticks I'm just considering them on their own and I'm not trying to see if I can dupe them within my collection, I actually found last night that I could dupe this so let me swatch this one for you. So this is Mona. So you can see I think there how just creamy and pigmented it is. It is really really beautiful. It's incredibly similar to MAC Marrakesh so let me swatch that next to it for you. Now, they are not exactly the same by any standards, but they are very much in the same ballpark. And if I'm honest, I actually prefer Marrakesh. So Marrakesh is actually a little touch warmer than Mona, which I think is a bit more flattering to me. I do really like Mona. I would definitely keep it if I hadn't kind of thought that it's quite similar to Marrakesh and looked at the two of them next to each other. I would have definitely been keeping Mona, but... As this one's similar and I think I actually prefer Marrakesh to Mona, I'm going to get rid of Mona. So, first one gone. The next one I want to consider is Shirley. This one actually really appeals to me mainly, and I do think this is part of the thing with the Audacious lipsticks, is that the name definitely means something and it'll mean different things to different people and the name will affect 
I think how much you like the lipstick. Um, so for me, it's funny because Lauren was like, oh Shirley, that really puts me off. I wouldn't buy a lipstick named Shirley. But for me, I was thinking about Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables and I was like, oh Anne, like, love that. So interesting, but this is Shirley. Here it is swatch. So I've taken the swatch of Marrakesh off. Um, so that is just Mona. So there is Shirley. Now, Shirley is really, really pretty. It is one of my wetter ones, but there is part of me that also thinks this is one of the newest ones in my collection and if I was to leave it and let it dry out a little bit, would it become more wearable because the colour is beautiful. But in the cutaways, I feel like Olivia, which is what I'm wearing just now, and Shirley look really, really similar. Olivia next to Shirley. So swatching the two of them, I think Olivia's got a little bit more brown in it than Shirley, but having looked at the cutaways, I don't know if that's really transferring to the lip when it's actually on. Like, I don't know if you're really seeing that difference because it's a very, very subtle difference in real life. So that is those three from back here. So Shirley is definitely slightly less brown. It's a little bit, I won't say brighter because it's not as much brown in it, but it's not a bright lipstick. It's still quite a deep red, but I do think they're both very, very pretty. Now, as I said, I have put Olivia on to film with and have already had to wipe it off my teeth quite a few times, but I do think the color, I mean, this is my eternal fight with these lipsticks is that the colors really appeal to me. I think the colors are so beautiful. At the moment I feel like I just actually want to keep both of them because I really like them both swatched. I think what I'll do is maybe put these to one side and come back to them at the end. So next up I'm going to swatch Charlotte. I actually like Charlotte but Charlotte is one I actually wore this film the video that I filmed ahead of this one and Charlotte is one that I need to blow off to make wearable so that I'm not worrying about it too much and I feel like you just you lose the lovely pigment when you blot it off and build it up you don't get the same pigment as you get from just swiping it but in terms of the kind of colour it is I've got other colours that look like that and I would always pick one of those formulas over this one so I'm going to get rid of Charlotte. So far two gone and two in the maybe pile. One I definitely want to keep is Bet. So Bet is a beautiful really really deep colour. It's like a really deep brownie red. It's exactly my kind of favourite sort of shade. I'm sure I have other shades of lipstick that look quite similar to it but I really like this one and this is one that I actually feel quite safe wearing. So I will swatch that next to Charlotte here for you. So you can see it's a good bit deeper than any of these other ones. Similar to Mona, I feel like it just suits my colouring, it suits like my eye colour and everything. Definitely keeping Bet. Another one that I'm intending to keep is the shade Jane. Jane is a sort of orangey nude, completely different direction to anything else that we've swatched so far. But that is Jane down at the bottom there. That is the shade and I really like it. I find it a very easy to wear neutral. If I've done a sort of strong eye, this is the sort of lipstick that I can put on and I'm not worried about it. You know, it's not going to fight for attention, but it's not insipid either because I feel like I don't really suit those very sort of beige elastoplast kind of nudes. This is not really a nude because it's definitely got something to it and I think some people would call that quite a strong lip actually. But to me, this is a sort of neutral shade that I can wear with a heavier eye, so I'm going to keep Jane. So at the moment we've got two gone, two staying and two maybes that we're coming back to. The next one that I'm going to talk about is Rita. Now again, the name of this really appeals, it reminds me of Rita Hayworth and the colour is gorgeous, it's so pretty. I will insert the cutaway and you might recognise that this cutaway has actually been filmed the same day that I filmed the video that went up last Sunday, which was my beauty replacements wish list video. However, in the description box of that video, if you guys had a look, I am wearing Kat Von D Project Chimps liquid lipstick. And the reason for that is because I filmed the cutaway for this and didn't feel that I was wanting to risk filming a full video of me talking and moving my mouth 
wearing this lipstick. It looks really lovely in a sort of still minimal movement cutaway or whatever but it's just such a wet one. It moves around. I thought when I got this, this was in a Christmas gift set and I thought the fact it was a mini might give me more control, which it definitely does. It gives me more control upon application, but that doesn't change that it's a very wet formula. So basically I didn't feel comfortable wearing this to film in. Therefore, I wouldn't just feel comfortable to wear it going out for the day. So there is no point in me keeping this one. So this one is going to go. I'll give you a swatch of it just in case you know you're interested is a beautiful bright red perfect for the name and based on the color i would love to keep it i think it's absolutely gorgeous but formula says otherwise and unfortunately everything that i've just said about rita can also be said for carmen so carmen again you'll see in the cutaway i filmed this just ahead of filming last week's video and color is so beautiful it's got a kind of orange through it I love the name again, Carmen, it reminds me of the Lana Del Rey song. I really, really like the colour, but the formula is just so wet, I don't feel safe wearing it. So I'm definitely getting rid of Carmen. And again, I will give you a swatch of it just to let you see. I mean, it is, it's so pretty. It's that super bright sort of tomato red got a hint of orange through it. So we have now got four going, two staying and two on the maybe pile. The last one that I've got to consider is Liv and Liv is one that I'm going to keep. So Liv is again one of my older ones so it's a little bit more dried out which is great but I feel like as well this one again it was just never quite as wet as some of the others to start with. So Liv is a beautiful deep purple, not going to be for everybody but I really really like it so definitely keeping Liv. Let's watch it here for you. Now I know obviously looking at that swatch a purple is a purple especially when you're as pale as me. You know once you're talking about certain colours past a certain point on the darkness spectrum on somebody as pale as me they're not going to read differently on my face. So although I'm keeping this I am like even as I swatch it and look at it I know that there was MAC lipsticks that I kept that looked like this but the point of this kind of declutter is not to start delving in and pulling out everything it's just to consider this within the collection of NARS lipsticks and then if I can whittle them down in this way I'm planning to do it by colour with what's left with what makes it through these rounds almost at the end of the year so for now although I know I own other shades that are like this I'm keeping Liv because I think it's a really, really pretty one. So I've just been to wash the swatches off my arm before I wipe them on something and stain it. And whilst I was in the bathroom doing that, I noticed I had lipstick like on my teeth here at the side. And as I said, I've already wiped lipstick off my teeth with this lipstick, which is Olivia, before I started filming. And that's me just had to wipe it again. So although I had Olivia and Shirley in the maybe that I said I was going to come back to, that has actually just made up my mind for me. Like I wouldn't feel safe to go about my day wearing this from how many times I've had to wipe it in the confines of this bedroom just filming this video. The thing is I am just I'm just in my bedroom right now. Like I know I'm talking, so I'm moving my mouth, but like nobody's anywhere near me. You know, I all I can think about wearing this is that that has moved that much. In this bedroom like if I was to wear this going to work and I was on a crowded train and people are pushing into me and you know you're pushing your bag up like this like trying to keep it out people's way I feel like I'd do that and you know my hair would pull my lipstick across my face so yeah I'm just I'm clearly never going to actually go about my day feeling all right wearing this lipstick and as much as I love the color because I do love the color it's like a deep brownie red I will have something similar so I'm going to get rid of Olivia and I'm also actually just going to get rid of Shirley because I sat there and just said like if I just wait it will dry out a little bit. I've waited ages in this one and it's still not dried out enough that it's gone this way and like yes some of them have dried out in a way that has made them more of a pleasure to work with and I feel safer with them but don't feel I've lost the pigment but there does not appear to be any rhyme or reason as to how they dry out because some of them that I've had for less time than I've had others will seem more dried out than some that are older. So I can't guarantee that this would dry out to a point that I would feel safe using it. And even if it did, how long is that going to take? How long is this going to be in my collection with me not feeling safe to use it, wondering if it's dried out or not yet? And then ultimately when I'm making that decision as I get ready, 
thinking about this and then being like, I don't have time to deal with that right now. I'll just put a different lipstick on. So I'm just going to save future me the bother and get rid of these two as well. Which means at the end of the video, we're getting rid of one, two, three, four, five, six and keeping three. Two thirds going, one third staying. So I'm really pleased with that. So that is everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching it. Obviously I'm just filming it just now so I haven't done the math but what I will do is put up a screenshot to show you how much I am getting rid of monetary value out of my collection by decluttering those six lipsticks there behind me just so that you know what impact that's going to have on my inventory. Fingers crossed for quite a decent impact. They are high-end lipsticks, so I'm hoping that six of them will give me a reasonable reduction, um, although one is a mini, but hopefully still a reasonable reduction. That is now everything for this video, so thank you so much for watching it. I really appreciate you spending this time with me, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.